If you're watching this video, awesome, because it means you just got a new Tracker 90 ATV. You ready to ride? Of course you are, but not so fast. Watching this video is kind of like the airline safety announcements you have to watch before takeoff. I know, more rules. But hey, if you don't understand everything about an ATV, you could lose control, and severe injury or death could occur. So you'll want to be careful. In this video, we'll cover stuff that you just gotta know. And we'll do some riding to show you a few things. Like how to climb a hill without flipping, or how to make sharp turns without rolling over. Now, maybe you're like an expert already. Great, but what will a few minutes hurt? Plus, it'll make your parents happy. Then you can go riding, right? Let's do this. Okay, really quickly. Here is something very important that you might not know about ATVs. You see, there is no such thing as one size fits all. Each ATV size is matched with the age of the rider. The Tracker 90 is designed for ages 10 and older, and that makes it just right for younger riders. If you aren't sure, there is a sticker on the ATV that will tell you what you need to know. And another thing, riders under 16 should never ride without adult supervision. And another rule, and this one is so important. The ATVs we're talking about in this video are made for exactly one rider, you. Carrying a passenger increases your risk of losing control. So never, ever take your friends along for the ride. Just don't do it. Now, let's review the gear that you need to have. So, how would you like a nice piece of gravel? Right in your eye. Ouch! Yeah, me neither. When riding an ATV, you'll want protection from things like flying rocks, sticks, and other things that you might run across. By the way, that flying stuff is what many ATV riders call roost. No, not rooster, roost. And it's all part of the ride. So, here are the kind of clothes and gear that you'll need. Let's start with boots. Your legs, feet, and ankles need support as you shift your weight when taking turns or hills. So running shoes won't cut it. And sandals, not so much. And barefoot, well, you better mean barefoot because you never, ever ride without covering your feet. You must wear sturdy, over-the-ankle boots like a good hiking boot to help prevent ankle and foot injuries. Next, you must wear durable long pants and a long sleeve shirt. Because when you get brushed by a bush or a tree limb, you'll quickly see why shorts and t-shirts just don't mix with ATVs. And if an accident does happen, this clothing will help protect your skin. And that's important. Oh, and if it's too hot to put on the proper gear, then maybe it's just too hot to ride. Um, do you like your fingers and hands? Yeah, me too. So you need the right gloves. Off-road gloves are padded over the knuckles and they protect your hands from things like slapping branches and flying gravel. And they even make the ride more comfortable by absorbing vibration from the ATV. So, I know a kid that once got a seed in his eye because he wasn't wearing goggles. He had to go to the doctor and couldn't open his eye for four days. So, like your eyes need protection from, you know, bugs, dirt, and well, seeds. And your shades won't cut it. You must get a pair of goggles that wrap around the eyes. Good goggles should be scratch resistant with something called a hard-coated polycarbonate lens? Just Google it. And look for the VESC8 or V8 logo. It means the goggles were designed, tested, and approved for ATV riding. And make sure the goggles match and fit your helmet. If they don't seal around your eyes, they aren't the right fit. So keep looking. There is one acceptable option. Some helmets have a pull-down visor built in. This visor seals the front of the helmet and also offers the needed eye protection. Okay, let's have some fun. Let's see what happens when this pumpkin hits a tree. Ouch! So imagine if you were the pumpkin going 20 miles an hour and you can see why you gotta wear a helmet. And not just any helmet. When shopping for one, look for the Department of Transportation DOT logo or the Snell Foundation logo on the helmet. That means the helmet passed a high level of safety standard testing. Hmm. I wonder if they test these helmets with pumpkins. Now there's an idea. Yeah, don't try this at home. We used an old helmet for this little demonstration. There's a couple of quick things you should know about picking out a helmet. Make sure the helmet fits snugly and fastens securely, because it won't help much if it falls off right before you really need it. 
When riding an ATV, a full face helmet is a must. It's because it protects the whole head better. That means your head will have a much better chance of surviving that accident you didn't think you would ever have. Another thing, helmets don't last forever. So if your helmet would ever take a severe blow, you must replace it immediately. The last piece of gear you should consider, and I really like mine, is the chest protector, sometimes called a roost protector. They weigh almost nothing. Mine is like one pound. It's well vented and it protects my body from flying stuff called roost. Why protect this part of the body? Well, let's see, um, heart, lungs, yeah, stuff like that. Pretty important, right? Hey, they don't cost too much, and it's a great idea. Plus, you'll look like a stormtrooper. Awesome! Okay, last time, then we're done. What's the first thing you do when getting into a car? You fasten your seatbelt, right? Of course you do. Well, before you climb onto any ATV, always put on your safety gear, including your helmet, and make sure that it's securely fastened. Now you're ready to ride. Okay, I told you we would do some riding, and we will, promise. But there is one more thing to cover. There is also a lot to learn about the ATV. This video is one way to find the info you need. But don't forget to read the owner's manual. It covers things about the Tracker 90 you'll need to know. Also, pay special attention to the warning labels in the manual and stuck right on your ATV. They are there to help you keep it in good running shape and keep you safe. Let me ask you. Did you know that pilots inspect their airplane before every flight? Be like a pilot, inspect your ATV before every ride. Wait, what? Every time you ride? Yeah, like you must do this every time you ride. The last thing you want is to be stranded from something that you could have caught if you had just looked for it. First, set the parking brake before you start the inspection. This is a really good habit to get into. Now, you're ready to get started with the walk around. Number one, check the air pressure on all four tires. If they don't have the right amount of air, it can cause the ATV to handle really weird. The same goes with having too much air in the tire. Weird isn't how these are supposed to ride. And here's something to know. You'll need one of these. It's a tire gauge made especially for the low tire pressure of an ATV. A regular car tire gauge won't work. Make sure the tires are inflated to the pressure that's in the owner's manual and listed right on the tire. While you're at it, look for any cuts or gouges that could cause a leak. Number two, using a torque wrench, make sure the wheel nuts are tightened to the proper torque. Number three, check the lights. Turn everything on and make sure the headlights and taillights are working and that the brake lights come on when braking. Lights are good, even in bright sunshine, because it helps you see other ATV riders and avoid running into them. Number four, now check the fluids. Sometimes leaks can be hard to find, so look carefully, because if you run out of oil, your ATV might die. Check the gas tank and fill it up. Why? Well, what if you ride farther than you thought you would? Pushing an ATV is not nearly as much fun as riding one. Number five. Here's something that a lot of ATV riders forget to check. It's the air filter. If it looks dirty, then follow the instructions in the manual on how to clean it. Why bother with this? It's how your engine breathes air. And if it gets really dirty, it can do serious damage. And again, your ATV might die. Number six. Next, check the chain. Is it dirty or clogged with mud? Is it getting worn out? Yeah, that's a thing. Make sure it's properly adjusted according to the settings in the owner's manual. And hey, if you aren't sure, ask for help. Now look at the chassis and the suspension parts. Just make sure there aren't anything like sticks or rocks stuck in these parts. And number seven, finally, give the ATV a close look and check all the nuts and bolts that you can see. Just make sure they're tight because riding on rough terrain will cause parts to loosen up. Tighten them up if needed and use the proper wrench. By the way, you might remember this whole list was something called T-Clock. T for tires and wheels, C for controls and cables, L for lights and electronics, O for oil and fuel, and C for chain drive and chassis and suspension. Hey, guess what? We're ready to ride!
Now, if you're part of that 0.001% of people that have never climbed on a bicycle, <laughs> let's show you how that's done using an ATV. First, make sure the parking brake is set so the ATV does not roll away. That would be so embarrassing. Next, stand on the left side of the ATV, then grab the handlebar with your left hand, then put your left foot on the footrest. Now, lean over and grab the other handlebar and swing your free leg over the seat. Place it on the other footrest. Now, just sit down on the seat. Done. All right, ready to start the ATV? Um, yeah, like I've been ready. Start your ATV using the Bone C checklist. B, set the parking brake. O, turn on the ignition key and set your fuel to on. N, put the ATV in neutral. E, put the engine stop switch to run or start. And C, choke. If the engine is cold, meaning it's cold weather or this is the first ride of the day, you might want to pull the choke to the on position. As the engine warms up, turn the choke off. Now press the starter button to fire up the engine. Now, this is a good time to tell you something about riding ATVs. You see, it's different than anything else. I learned that ATVs are what's called rider active. That means that you shift your body weight when turning, going up and down hills, or crossing over stuff like rocks and logs. You have to really know what you're doing. So check this out. Okay, stretch out a little bit. Because riding our ATV is a lot different than driving a car. We're gonna be moving around and being rider active. You want to be able to move your weight along with your ATV in order to keep your ATV and yourself upright. So whenever you're making a turn, you're going to shift your weight into your turn. Look through your turn, head and eyes level. Always keep your knee in and keep your foot on the footrest. Now turn the other way, shift your weight into your turn, keep your foot on the footrest, knees in, and look through your turn, head and eyes level. Okay, now that you understand about rider active, you're ready to roll. Release the parking brake while applying the brakes with your left hand. Next, shift into forward gear. That's the F. Then release the brakes and slowly give it throttle with your right thumb. When you're ready to stop or slow down, then gently squeeze the brakes. And remember, ride with caution while you get a feel for your ATV. Now, speaking of brakes, they're really important because stopping is good. I mean, go over a cliff or stop. Um, yeah, I choose stop every time. So here's a couple of tips to remember when braking. When turning, do most of your braking before the turn. You might do just the opposite in a car, but here's why to do it this way for an ATV. If you turn too fast and hit the brakes too hard, you can lose control and tip over. Here's something else. When riding on slippery surfaces, you should gently apply both brakes. Lightly is the key. Braking too hard can lock the wheels and make you lose traction and that's not good. Here's something that you might be tempted to do, but don't. Never take either foot off the footrest. Why is that? Well, you can lose your balance, even while seated, and that's not good either. So let's talk about speed. Yeah, we're talking about your safety here. It's important to know your limitations. The more you ride safely, the more skills you develop. Don't try anything beyond your skill level. And as much as you may want to, never, ever operate your ATV at excessive speeds. You increase your risk of losing control if you go too fast for the terrain, visibility conditions, or your experience level. And don't even think about trying wheelies, jumps, or other stunts. By the way, here's one of the biggest mistakes that people make riding their ATV. Believe it or not, they don't look forward when they ride. Yeah, they look at the ground right in front of them, and they whack a tree that they didn't see. Think about this, it's called SIPD, and it stands for Search, Identify, Predict, Decide, and Execute. We stuck a GoPro on a helmet before this rider learned about SIPD, and guess what? They spent most of their time looking at the ground. Here's what they should be looking at instead. Look forward, down the trail, see what's coming, decide what to do, then do it. And remember, stay focused and alert at all times. Even a quick little distraction can lead to losing control and something you definitely don't want. A serious or even deadly accident. Okay, we're riding and having some fun. But here's what's so cool about ATVs. You can go places where cars and pickups can't. And that means riding up and going down some hills, but not just any hills. Some hills are just too steep for your ATV. 
no matter how good you are. So use some common sense. If that hill looks too steep, then it probably is. Find a better path or go around it. Okay, let's talk about riding on hills. It's important to have momentum when you're riding on a hill because you want to get all the way up and over. You don't want to stop on the hill. So you're going to give it a little bit of gas, have some speed as you approach the hill. So you're going to stand up and shift your weight forward so you have your weight to the uphill side over your front wheels. Good. Okay, as you're going to go down a hill, you're going to get your weight all the way back. Okay, because it's important to always keep your weight to the uphill side. So when you're going down a hill, have it to the back. All right, now to traverse the hill, Traversing is if we're going to ride along the side of a hill, you're going to keep your weight to the uphill side. So make sure you use your hips, keep your weight to the uphill side, and always look in the direction you're going. All right, who's ready to ride some hills? Okay, now you've made it to the top. Before you go back down, check the terrain. Choose the straightest and clearest path possible. Now, shift your weight to the uphill side. Keep your speed low so you can keep control of the ATV, and always keep your feet on the footrest and look ahead. Now. Sometimes you might need to ride across a slope instead of straight up and down it. That's called traversing. Here are some of the basics. Keep both feet firmly on the footrest. Your instincts might tell you to put your foot out for balance if you start tipping. Don't do it. Instead, lean toward the uphill side of the slope. That helps keep the ATV's wheels in contact with the ground. If it begins to tip, turn the wheels downhill, then jump off toward the uphill side immediately. So, we've covered turns and hills, but what about crossing obstacles like rocks and logs or a rut in the ground? First, will you be crossing the obstacle with one tire or both tires? If it's a two-tire obstacle, then cross those by firmly holding the hand grips and standing up. Slightly bend your knees and elbows so you can use them as shock absorbers. Now, approach the obstacle at 90 degrees and watch your speed. And finally, you might need to add a slight amount of throttle when the front wheels meet the obstacle. Just be sure to release the throttle when the front wheels have gone over, and then get ready for the back wheels to hit. If only one tire is crossing the obstacle, say, like a rock, then it's pretty much the same. But don't add throttle as you cross it. Last thing about obstacles, sometimes you just shouldn't try to cross it. Be smart and be safe, and be ready to go around. Alright, turns, check. Hills, check. Obstacles, check. Wow, with practice, you could become an expert. There is another type of obstacle that we should discuss. Water crossings can be fun, but they can also be dangerous, so pay attention, please. First, try to avoid riding through water in the first place. It's one thing to splash through big puddles, but please avoid riding in streams and rivers. Next, you should never ride through water deeper than the maximum depth listed in the owner's manual. Three, if you must cross a stream, try to stay away from the fast current. It can be much stronger than what you see or think. And yeah, that heavy ATV will actually float in the right water conditions. And then you could get washed away. If you find a safe place to cross, always be ready to shift your weight in any direction to keep your balance. And finally, you should always test the brakes after leaving the water to make sure they work properly. Just give them a gentle squeeze as you ride away. And remember that wet brakes won't work as quickly as dry brakes will. And another reminder for conservation, you really should avoid water crossings wherever you might damage stream beds or where fish might spawn. And please, don't just plow through vegetation growing near the shoreline. That'll cause the banks of the stream to cave in and that's also called erosion. It's a bad word for landowners and not good for water quality. Okay, we've talked about how to ride in turns, hills, over obstacles and through water. ATVs will go nearly anywhere, but hear me now. Never, I seriously mean never, ride on pavement. You see, an ATV isn't designed for that. It's meant to be driven off road. And be sure to follow these rules if you must cross a hard paved road. Make sure you know your state's laws and regulations about ATVs crossing roads. Bring your ATV to a complete stop on the shoulder of the road. Yield the right of way to all oncoming traffic and look both ways twice. Ride cautiously and cross the road at a 90 degree angle. Make sure there are no blind spots where you cross. Now, if you're riding in a group, have the first rider dismount on the shoulder and watch for traffic as he or she waves the group across the road. Then have the last rider dismount on the shoulder after crossing and watch traffic to help the leader across. 
Here's one more note about conservation and keeping ATVs looking good in the eyes of people that might not ride them. It's up to all of us to only ride on designated off-road trails and areas, respect the rights of others, private property owners, other trail users, and campers, obtain travel maps and regulations from public agencies before you ride, keep away from meadows, lakeshores, wetlands, and streams, do your part by behaving responsibly. And here's a quick note to your parents about your new 90 ATV. Did you know that you can adjust the 90 to make it run more slowly when first starting out? That's actually a pretty good idea. Beginners can take their time learning how to safely drive off-road. Then, when they're ready, it can be adjusted to run faster. Top speed is about 10 miles per hour, and that's just right for this ATV. So, we're almost done here, and you can go ride for real. Awesome! Okay, almost done, I promise. I'd like to share with you what the ATV Safety Institute calls their golden rules. These are a good idea, keep you safe, keep your ATV in good shape, and help everyone have a great time. Always wear a DOT compliant helmet, goggles, long sleeves, long pants, over the ankle boots, and gloves. Never ride on paved roads except to cross and only when done safely and permitted by law. Another vehicle could hit you. ATVs are designed to be operated off highway. Never ride under the influence of alcohol or drugs. Never carry a passenger on a single rider ATV and no more than one passenger on an ATV specifically designed for two people. Ride an ATV that's right for your age. Supervise riders younger than 16. ATVs are not toys. Ride only on designated trails at a safe speed. Take a hands-on ATV rider course and the free online e-course. Just visit atvsafety.org or call 800-887-2887 to learn more. Okay, how about one very last thing? Let's call it bonus material. Remember that pre-ride inspection or T-clock? Of course you do. Well, what if something happens on the trail? You sure can't call the auto club. That's why it's a good idea to keep a toolkit with you. Equip your kit with the following. An extra spark plug, electrical tape, spare bulbs, mechanic wire, duct tape, a knife, a flashlight, toe strap or 10 feet of rope, a spark plug wrench, wrenches, screwdrivers, pliers, a tire repair kit, and of course it would be a great idea to learn how to fix this stuff before you need to know it. Now, it's time for a ride. Just remember, the only way to really learn is to do it on the trail. The very last thing, please sign up for an ATV safety course. You can even use your Tracker 90 in the course. The things you learn in this course could save you from serious injury, or worse. You can learn so much more at www.atvsafety.org. So, have fun and ride safely off-road. <laughs>